trials for witchcraft in England and Scotland peaked uh, at around the 15th, between the 15th and the late uh, 18th century. Now, lots of people have written about the sociological, the political, the religious uh, precepts to this phenomenon. But actually, from a legal perspective, really the law, and particularly the criminal law, was being used here to do pretty much what the criminal law is always used to do, which is to deal with a perceived social problem uh, that is uh, of public interest and public concern. That particular public problem um, was the concern that witchcraft was on the increase. Um, and there are many precepts um, for this. So in, 15, in 1484, Pope Innocent VIII uh, had signed the papal bull, uh, which is, became known as the witch's bull, which gave the Inquisition in Europe vast powers to both investigate, try, and indeed punish um, witches. At the same time, or a little bit later, um, the Reformation in England, pushed by, of course, Henry VIII, had increased the opinion amongst both Protestants and Catholic sides um, of the debate that essentially dark forces had been unleashed by this religious um, upheaval. And thus what we see gradually as the 15th century went on is a, a conversion of notions of witchcraft and magic from being something essentially that most people used in various ways, um, whether to make their crops grow um, or to wade off disease or to bring good luck, to being something that was attributed to um, God's enemy, uh, the devil, uh, and had actual and catastrophic impacts upon people's everyday lives. And thus it's little surprise, in, effectively, that the systems and rules of law were marshaled to try and deal with this perceived um, social menace. It was in this climate that the Witchcraft Act of 1542 was passed, England's first witchcraft law, which essentially established witchcraft as a crime which could be punishable by death. That law only lasted uh, until 1547, when Henry VIII died and was replaced on the throne by Elizabeth um, I, replaced by the 1563 Act Against Conjugations, uh, Enchantments and Witchcraft. Now that made anyone uh, causing anyone to be killed by witchcraft punishable by uh, death. Interestingly, and to some extent, this was a more merciful act in that prosecutors had to actually demonstrate that someone had been hurt as a result um, of witchcraft rather than just that the person uh, alleged had been practicing various um, rituals and so on. The act also, um, for its time, put in quite a few procedural safeguards relative to actually several other crimes. So in order to be prosecuted for witchcraft, you had to be first examined uh, by a justice of the peace, and if that justice of the peace believed there was a case to answer, you would then go, as it were, to a full trial. And one of the interesting aspects of English witch trials at the time is that they were remarkably steeped actually in the law uh, and actually had quite a few procedural safeguards um, relative to other crimes that were being prosecuted at, at the time. And certainly um, rel uh, relative to the sort of trials that were going on in mainland Europe at the time, particularly in France uh, and in Germany, um, a lot of historians have argued that our witch trials were in, in essence rather more fair uh, and rather more based on um, evidence. And indeed, whilst quite a few trials occurred, quite a few people were acquitted, um, which is something that didn't happen very often uh, in German witchcraft trials. And actually, even when people were convicted, they were quite often spared the, the death penalty um, in these cases. So to some extent, this was very much a law and a rule-based um, system that was being followed, at least um, at this point.